there have been some massive changes when it comes to Facebook ads. And what I want to do today is talk about something that continues to come up in my communities with my students, people like you, is, is there a future for Facebook ads? Or is the day of Facebook ads done? And more practically, what does that mean for us and our online businesses, our ability to generate leads, our ability to create sales? Let's have a frank discussion about the changes that are happening and how that should affect what you need to be doing in your online business. Let's discuss. Welcome to episode 124 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less, and live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, I'm excited about this conversation. Uh, Facebook ads is one of those things I love to talk about. Um, and I have friends that know that I kind of don't like Facebook ads. And so they like to kind of poke at me sometimes and get me to talk about them because they know it riles me up. So I love it. Let's just do it. Let's dive into it today. Um, before we do though, I want to give you an alternative to Facebook ads. I want to give you a four-step formula to building a business that doesn't require ads at all. And we're going to talk about that a bit more in depth in this episode, but I just want to give you the entire framework in an on-demand passive income workshop that I shot for you. You can watch this literally whenever you want. It is in-depth teaching. It breaks down the business model that I run for both of my businesses, neither of which require ads. Uh, it works. It will continue to work as we'll talk about a bit in this episode, but you need to understand how this business model works and hopefully take me up on it and build your business in this way. It's absolutely free workshop. It's super didactic, really, really pumped full of good stuff. I want you to go watch it. It's kind of my best material, especially if you're new to what I'm teaching or if you never watched it, this is the time. It is free. It's going to share with you the four elements you need to create $1,000 a month or more of passive income in just 30 minutes. It's a day. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash workshop and you can access it on demand there. Or if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to link to it below. grahamcochran.com slash workshop. Uh, seriously, please do it. My students are making good money off of this workshop and building entire businesses that are doing tens of thousands of dollars with this free workshop. So there you go. Okay. Well, let's talk about some of the changes first that have been happening um, and then the big thrust of what that means for you, and then what you can do about these changes. First of all, Apple and, and Facebook kind of have been butting heads for a long time, and they, they kind of hate each other, and it really came to pass the summer of 21, where Apple updated their iOS and made it so that your iPhone or your iOS device doesn't automatically track what you're doing around the internet. Um, you have to opt in to allowing the Apple iOS to monitor your every, every move on the internet. Now, what's funny is that a lot of people are like, wait, but Apple and, and, and all these other companies are following everything I do on the internet. Yes. Yes. They're, they're listening to us right now. <laughs> they're listening to us right now. Like they follow everything we do. They always have, um, and this is critical for you to understand, if in case you don't, and you, if you really understand this, then forgive me, I just want to pause for one second for those of you that are like, what are the, what's the big deal here? The reason Facebook has become so dominant of a platform for running ads and the reason why they have made so much money off the backs of business owners like us who are funneling money to the platform, why? Why do we give Facebook money? Not because they have a lot of people on their platform. It's because they take all this data. They track all this data. They know everything about us, which allows them to, in theory, serve up very smart ads to only the right people at the right time based off of a lot of information, which in theory makes them very convertible, right? Your ads will convert more. So people are like, dude, Zuckerberg, take my money because you you know everything about uh, my potential audience and therefore you can create effective ads. Uh, but Apple's making that a lot harder for Facebook, hence why Zuckerberg and, and, uh, and good old Tim over at Apple are, Tim Cook are, they're headbutting in, in, the, in the press and in the media and and they probably, they're probably best friends though in real life. Don't you just imagine them sitting on some yacht just drinking fancy champagne and laughing about the fake fight? Anyway, <laughs> maybe that's just me. So Apple iOS changes. Uh, 
Then you've got all the web browsers, right? Google made headlines this summer saying that they were going to phase out third-party cookies, which means they were going to get rid of the ability for um, the, the browser, the Chrome browser, to track everything you're doing all around the internet. Um, they have since, in, in, since the month of June, delayed that phase out, I think, to 2023. They delayed it by another year. Um, but Apple Safari already does this. Firefox already does this in some capacity. So you're seeing web browsers begin to block third-party cookies. All, what, what does all this mean? It just means that there's so much of an emphasis on privacy, on your privacy, that's, that's become trendy now. And so companies want to align as if they are for you and support you and care about you. And I mean, I, I hope they care about you and I. I don't, I don't think they do though. I think, I don't know. I don't want to get cynical here, but that's the trend they're jumping on, the privacy trend. And so they are making hard decisions to limit their ability to track your every move on the internet to give you more privacy, which feels good for the consumer. Um, but what it means is it's bad for Facebook because they can no longer track you and they can no longer serve up as effective ads, which means if you rely on Facebook ads, there's some problems for you because what I'm hearing from my friends that run ads, again, this is anecdotal, but I'm hearing a lot of Facebook ad costs are going up. Um, people are getting less and less conversion for their ad spend. Um, it's it's getting harder and harder. I always have felt like Facebook ads are always changing in general. And so the moment you've got your your hands around an ad that's performing or some kind of you know targeting that's working well for you and your people, it changes. But I feel like that has happened to the nth degree this year where it's getting harder to convert on Facebook ads. So those are just some recent changes. But look, this is not a news article. Here's the deal. I have always felt that it is dangerous dangerous with a capital D to rely on a platform like Facebook for their ads to generate your leads. Always have felt that it's dangerous. That has only become more so dangerous in light of these recent changes with Apple, Google, you know, Firefox, all these, these big changes happening. So if you are running your business in such a way that you need Facebook ads or YouTube ads, we can throw YouTube ads in there, or you know Google ads or you know Instagram ads, which are Facebook, same company. If you're running your business in such, such a way that you rely on those ads to generate your leads, you really need to consider a change. I've been saying this for years, but maybe this will, will be a conversation that finally sticks for you um, because I have a feeling that this is going to be harder and harder moving forward to you just throw money into ads and make it work. My prediction is that the big businesses are going to be the ones that can continue to use ads on Facebook and these platforms to win because they're going to be the ones that have the budgets big enough. Ad costs are going to, I predict, go through the roof, which is going to price out smaller businesses um, like us who have, maybe you have a budget where you're willing to spend $50 a day or $100 a day or $1,000 a day. You know, it just depends on your business. Um, because if you can justify it with the return on ad spend, it's worth it. I don't know. I think it's going to be a lot harder. So it's super dangerous to rely on Facebook ads. So the question, because people ask me, Graham, you know, what's the best way to run ads? And they, they that, those are people that don't know me well, because I don't run ads. Um, I don't rely on any kind of ads to generate leads. Uh, I use a different method, which is called content marketing. And I'm going to plead with you one more time here and make the case for content as not only the better strategy, but the future-proof strategy, right? I don't want to just give you what's trendy. I, I, I don't think I do ever give you what's trendy. Um, I don't believe in trends, although some trends might align with what I'm doing from time to time, and that's great. Um, but what I want to give you is what works and what will continue to work, Um Proven methods. Make sense? Okay. So that proven method is content marketing. And here's why. And here's, I just want you to get your head around this. Um, and we'll talk about at the very end why it's future proof as well. Number one, if you're a newer business, it's free, right? It costs you nothing to create a piece of content and put it out there in the world. And what do I mean by content? It could be a blog post on the, your site that you host. It could be a podcast like this one. It could be a YouTube video like this one. If you watch it on YouTube, um, it could also mean going, you know, live on Facebook or on Instagram or doing clubhouse um, rooms or 
TikTok. I mean, technically any of that is content. Um, but I would say the best kind of like the, the, the meat and potatoes of your content strategy should be blog post, podcast, or YouTube video. Why? Because point two, it's evergreen. Content is evergreen when done well. What does evergreen mean? It means it's always in season. It doesn't go away. Your Facebook ad strategy requires you to continue to pump money into the platform so that they continue to show your ad. Let's assume that your ad is effective. Um, and again, we're proving that that's going to be less and less the case with all these changes and these privacy changes. Um, but let's assume that you have an ad that's just crushing. It's, it's effective. It only will show up online as long as you're feeding the beast with the money. So the moment you stop, it disappears. Also, even if it's working realistically, you have to change it because people seeing the same ad over and over again eventually stop responding to the ad. That's why the billboards you know, on the, the highway where you live are changing all the time. That's why the commercials for the same products you see are changing. They don't keep running the same ad for 20, 10, 20 years. They have to change it. Uh, it's not evergreen. Whereas you can put up a YouTube video or you can have a, a podcast um, episode go up and years later, it can still bring you leads. Some of my biggest videos on the recording revolution, I have one that I did in 2017. Um, it's got like over 3 million views. It's about how to build a home studio for $350. Every day that video sends me leads to the recording revolution. That, that was over four years ago as of this taping that I filmed that video. Every day that video sends me leads. On this channel, I did a video on whether you should be an LLC or a sole proprietor. Like what's the best fit for your business to save you money on taxes? Like what's the best tax benefits there? Um, for whatever reason, that video popped with YouTube every day. That was three years ago now to the day almost. That video sends me leads for the Graham Cochran business, right? It's evergreen. That's what you want. Passive income really, it can rely on money. If you feed the, the Facebook ad beast, or it can rely on evergreen content. And as we see in a minute, I think evergreen content is gonna be more reliable. Not only is it free, which is better than paying money, but I think it's gonna be more reliable. Either way, you need something evergreen to send leads your way every day without you having to go and like hound people. Number three, content creates trust and credibility. There's a difference between somebody seeing an ad and deciding whether or not to click over to the free thing or the webinar or straight to the product versus a piece of content like this. Okay, maybe this is your first in interaction with me in a piece of content, but if it's not, assume that it is. You find me, you, you Google something, maybe you typed in Facebook ads on Google or YouTube and you saw this video or you, you landed on this podcast, okay? If you've never heard of me, you know, who is this guy? Well, we have, some, we have a few minutes here together for me to hopefully educate you, add value to your life, and give you a sense of my personality, what I stand for, who I am. And then you can decide, do I like this guy? Do I not? Do I trust this guy? Do I not? Does he offer value or not? I can't make you do anything. That's the one of the biggest lies about online businesses. If you have the right formula, you can manipulate people into buying. No, you can't. Okay. There's, there's strategy for selling a strategy for online business, but you can't make people do anything. People are going to make their own decisions. So all I can do is show up and serve you as powerfully as I can for free in the hopes that you will then trust me and see that I have some credibility. Content does that. An ad doesn't do that very well. It's possible with an ad, but it's harder. It, you already are at a non-starter for a lot of people when you show up in an ad, even if you've got a great video and you're so likable and you're really funny and you add a ton of value in your ad, which I hope you do if you run ads, but if there's already a non-starter for most people, why? Because you're showing up in an ad. People know it's an ad. Smart people do at least. And they know, okay, you're spending money to advertise here. You must be making money off the back end. And but yes, of course that's true. That, that's true with my free stuff. Like the reason I'm able to make free content for you is I make money off the back end uh, through my email funnel. If you dive deeper with me and, and give me your email address and, and enjoy more of my content. And I only can get that from you if I add value. So there's no, I'm not hiding anything here, but do you see that it smells a bit different when it's a free piece of content that's showing up that literally you can watch this or not watch this. I, I didn't spend money for this to show up. I'm putting it out there in the world to build, you know, some some rapport with you and to build some trust and credibility and to to show you that I care, to show you that I, I want to give to you first before I ever ask anything of you. 
it's, it's a lot harder when you're showing up as a sponsored ad. It's just, it just, it really, really is. So I think content creates trust and credibility, which you need as this online space gets more and more cluttered. You need trust and credibility. Number four, content is shareable. People don't want to share ads unless you're a really funny Bud Light commercial. Like, do you remember the, the Dilly Dilly Bud Light commercials? Oh my gosh. Like those were hilarious. People would share those because it was funny, right? Short of something funny like that, people aren't sharing ads. You know what they share? A good podcast. Oh God, you gotta listen to this podcast episode. They share a YouTube video. Dude, you gotta watch this video. This is so good. They share an article. This was so helpful. Read this. Like I learned so much from it. People share content. If you want other people to do the marketing for you, then create something worth sharing, worth talking about. And people will share it with their friends or with their following because people love sharing good stuff that they found on the internet, especially if it helped them and they know it'll help other people. So why spend time and money building an ad that no one's going to care about, no one's going to share, it's just going to disappear when you could spend the same amount of time and zero dollars and build a piece of content that helps people and that people want to share with the world. That is a huge part of how I've been able to grow is creating stuff that is shareable, that people go, dude, listen to this guy, listen to this guy, watch this video, watch this video. There's something powerful there. Uh, number five, this is huge for me. This is sort of an ethos. It's in the tagline of the show, but content is, gener is generous, okay, it's generous. And then generosity at its core is a magnetic trait. Generous people are magnetic. I talk about this a lot. If you have a brand that's built on giving away valuable information, valuable content, life-changing advice, um, then you are positioning yourself as a generous brand. And that generosity can't help but draw, draw people in, attract people. It is, it is magnetic. And the more generous you can be, the better your free content is that you're putting out there, the more you will stand out from a sea of sponsored ads and people that are just doing sponsored posts, all kinds of stuff. When you're just giving away something for free and literally you don't get paid, uh, you're not doing a brand deal, uh, you're not paying for that content to show up, like it's just, it's out there, that's magnetic. And it's hard to quantify that, but I'm just telling you, I've been doing this for 12 years. This is, this is the foundation of good business is generosity. And one way to be generous is to create the world's best free content in your niche. And then let's talk about number six, why you really should rely on content. And this is where I want to get into how it relates to Facebook ads is if you commit to creating content and you get good at content creation, which you need to, because you're in the game of content, if you're selling information products, membership sites, courses, coaching, masterminds, things like that, then you are building a skill set that is portable to any other platform. Okay, this is the future-proof element of content. The first future-proof element is that it's evergreen. You put out a video, you write a blog post, you shoot a podcast episode, it lives on the internet forever. It'll always be findable, discoverable, it'll always send people to you. Now, could YouTube change their algorithm and then your videos no longer pop up like they once did? 100%. That certainly happened to me. Could Apple Podcasts or Spotify stop showing your show? Yeah. Could the Google algorithm change and, and your, your blog or your site that was getting a lot of hits every day or every month, it, it now drops? Yeah. There's a lot out of our control. So a certain platform might dip. A certain um, channel of yours might not get as much juice as it once did. But guess what? If you are a content creator, you are the secret sauce not the platform, you are the secret sauce. So if you have built a skill set of creating content, if that platform goes away or trends out of favor and there's a new platform that comes into favor that's working, guess what? You just move over to that other platform and you bring your portable skill set that you built and you show up and you begin to add value on that platform for free. You begin to serve, you begin to build credibility, you begin to build trust, you, you create shareable content, you're generous, you just pour into people on that platform and you're good to go. Because th that's what we're using the internet for is discoverability, right? This is, this is what I hate about teaching 
in this space is that I get I, I, I get lumped into this category with a lot of other people that are teaching only part of how this works. Okay, and that's why I want you to go watch my passive income workshop that I told you about at the top of the show. If you've been sold the idea that, hey, there's this great opportunity online, you just make a course, you make a membership, um, you can just package up your knowledge and sell it. Yes, that is true. I literally wrote a book called How to Get Paid for What You Know. It comes out March, 2022. Um, that is true. That is part of the story. When people tell you that part, or if that's the only part you hear, or that's the only part you see, you know, so-and-so digital nomad is making $500,000 a year traveling the world, selling online courses. You see that and you get dollar signs in your eyes and you go, great, let me go make a course. And then you realize, ooh, I have no one to sell this to. How do I sell it? Oh, you just run ads. Like you're missing a huge part of how this whole thing works. You know, what's more important than your course is your content. Why is that? It's because for this to be a sustainable business for you, you have to become a brand that's discoverable. You have to build an audience. You have to be known, in, even if it's just in your little niche, in some corner of the internet. You don't have to be a celebrity. Most people don't know, know who I am. You do, because you're engaging with me right now. That's fine. I just need you to know. I don't need everyone to know. But you do need to be known online in your niche so that when you show up with a course, when you show up with a, a membership, when you want to launch some group coaching or a mastermind, you have people to sell this thing to. People that already trust you, already have engaged with you. They've gotten the free sample, multiple free samples, and they don't need much from you to know whether or not your paid product's going to be worth it because they know it's going to be worth it. And that's the thing is you need a steady stream of leads. I coach people all the time in my community, the six figure coaching community. These are, these are business owners who want to reach six figures in their business. And a lot of them, they're frustrated because they have an email list, they have a course, they've made some money. And they're like, I'm only making 600 a month or a thousand a month consistently right now. What do I got to do to get to get more revenue in the door? The answer is you need more leads, more consistent leads every month. How do I do that, Graham? content, content, not ads. It's, it's content. It's the most efficient thing you could do with your time is shoot a piece of content. Why? Because it will live on forever and send people your way for years. So you get this multiplicative effect where if every week you're creating pieces of content that can serve you for years to come, all of a sudden it grows exponentially. It's slow at first, but I, and I tell my students, between year two and year three, that's if you haven't seen anything b before them, it's by year two, year three. If you're doing it right, that's when the hockey stick happens. That's when you start to see some of the multiplicative effects of creating amazing content, start to send you an insane amount of steady leads that if you've done your job are ready to buy what you have to sell. This is so much more powerful than Facebook ads. Look, Facebook ads are gonna get harder and harder and harder to, to compete with or to compete on the platform. There, if you have performing ads right now, because you might be saying, Graham, I don't, you don't know what you're talking about. My ads are performing. Dude, good for you. If you have something that's working, do it. But please hear me, future-proof yourself because it's not gonna work forever. It's only gonna get more and more expensive. So if, if you are relying solely on Facebook ads and it's working, please hear me, diversify today. Commit to organic content today because they're gonna continue to make changes. Facebook is now relying on Apple and you know you know Google that makes Android operating system and Google Chrome and you know Apple Safari like the dominant web browsers like you know Mozilla's Firefox not as much these days but they are reliant on being able to track you around the internet to then be able to serve up the right ads the moment they lose less all that data or they lose a good chunk of that data is the moment they are no longer as powerful or as valuable. Um, and then it because they can just jack, they're going to have to jack up their prices. If there's not as much money coming in, they're going to have to jack up their prices. And that means it's just going to be a game of the rich. Only the big, big, big multi-million billion dollar companies are going to have the budgets that can say, well, it's just the price of, of doing business. It's going to price out a lot of small people like us. There's probably been a golden era of cheap Facebook ads that I think is coming to a close. I think it's good because I think it's just showing that like, that's not the way you build an online business like this. If you're a solopreneur or a small team and you want to do, 
500,000 a year, a million dollars a year, you don't need to spend a dime on ads. And it's certainly not a business model that you wanna build your business around. I'd say this all the time, but you're building your business in someone else's sandbox. And that's Facebook's sandbox, very, very dangerous. If you build it on content, then it's it's free, it's out there in the internet. You're not, pl- you're not banking on any one person's sandbox. You are creating a skill set of creating content and everywhere you go, even if a platform that was serving up your content disappears, you go into another platform. It doesn't matter. You can still generate leads through your content. So is there a future for Facebook ads? For the rich, um, for those who don't have good content, is it a future that you really want to be a part of? I don't think so. I don't think so. Do you know how hard it is to to walk people off the ledge of Facebook ads? Like, I, I... it's, it would be so much more popular for me if I just told you to keep running ads or better if I gave you a formula that works. I would sell, I think, a lot more courses and a lot more product if I just had some secret Facebook ad formula and uh, and I could sell that to you because I think that's what people want to hear. They want to build a course and then they want to spend $5 a day, $10 a day, $50 a day and get all the leads and be able to do the conversion and be like, wow, look at all the money I'm making without having to do anything. What they don't know is that content is actually a lot easier. It's a lot easier than Facebook ads. It's harder up front. It seems time consuming up front, but you aren't building a flash in the pan business. You are building hopefully a long-term 10, 20 year long, if not longer business. And to do that, you need to have little breadcrumbs all over the internet, pointing back to your site, pointing back to your lead magnets and your email list, establishing authority and credibility all over the internet. And you do that, not with ads, but with content that's evergreen, that lives on forever. As long as the internet exists. And if the internet doesn't exist, then we're all in trouble because then we can't even sell our products and none of this matters. Okay. I want to know what you think. Am I crazy and just losing my mind and and oblivious to what Facebook ads bring to the table. Let me know in a comment below. I will will totally hear out your argument. Uh, I love you still, even if we disagree. So am I crazy? Let me know in a comment below. Um, And if you're running Facebook ads and finding some success right now in light of these privacy changes, let us know what's working for those of us that want to run ads. Um, If one element of this conversation today changed your mind about ads or solidified in your mind the importance of content marketing, let me know in a comment below also. I would love to know what put you put you over the edge or what kind of was the kick in the butt for you to be like, dude, I need to commit to organic content. Let me know in a comment below. And if I can help you in any way, you know, the best way I could help you is honestly to give you my passive income workshop if you haven't watched it. Why? Because it shows where content plays into the selling of your course. How do you get, where you have zero audience and nobody knows who you are, how do you get people to your course and to buy it? How do you find people? What is that path? How do you automate it? How do you build a business that literally doesn't require you? Like that's what I'm all about. And that's what I teach in my passive income workshop. It's about 45 minutes of hard teaching, take notes. I've got a bunch of tips and tricks, templates you can just swipe and use to automate your business. Like it's all there, it's free. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash workshop and just watch it, please. It will help you and then take action on it and go build a business that doesn't rely on Mark Zuckerberg, doesn't rely on Apple changing their privacy laws and that affecting Facebook ads, doesn't rely on any of that stuff. It relies on you committing to building a sustainable online business, okay? Check it out, enjoy it. That's all I got for you today, my friend. I hope you're staying healthy and safe, and I cannot wait to see you on another episode real soon.